Here's part two of lesson 6.1, similarity. And we're on to part four, which is properties of dilations. Actually, no, we didn't get to the second part of part three. So let me scroll back up there, if you can call this scrolling. Okay, um, it says determine the slopes of AB and A prime B prime. What do you notice? So I did that step for us as well and you will need to copy this down and make sense of it. So I found the slope of AB and A prime B prime. And what I noticed is that the slopes are the same. So I noticed that for this side here, which is, for this side, and they're actually talking about this figure. That's why it's a little confusing because they have this one right here. But for A prime and B prime, the slopes are the same. So if the slopes are the same, that means that these two lines here are parallel to each other. Okay. All right. Properties of dilation. So one property is parallelism, which is what we just talked about. Corresponding sides, and in this case, let's talk about where the corresponding sides are and Right? When we talk about corresponding, it means that it's in the same location. So, for example, PB corresponds with P prime, B prime. And it's really important to know corresponding sides. That's going to come up with uh, similarity and proportions and proportional relationships. So that means that PB is corresponding with P prime, B prime because they're in the same location. All right? And BC corresponds with B prime, C prime, because they are also in the same location in the triangle. And PC corresponds with P prime, C prime, again, because they're in the same location in the triangle, all right? So what that means is PC is parallel to P prime, C prime, PB is parallel to P prime, B prime, CB is parallel to C prime, B prime. They will never inter intersect ever, and they will always have the same slope, okay? They will always, always, always have the same slope in similar figures, okay? Um, orientation. The orientation, which is the order in which the points go, um, and it's, it's going to be the same. So if you dilate a figure, the, or, the order of the points is not going to change, or the orientation, Okay, this word is important, and you may see it on a vocab quiz. Corresponding is another important one. You may see that on a vocab quiz as well. But I will make sure that we have a quick vocab lesson on that beforehand. All right, um, make sure you know what an image is and a pre-image, okay? Um, so, yeah, the orientation stays the same. It's PBC when I read it, you know, clockwise. It's... CBP, when I read it counterclockwise, it's P prime, B prime, C prime, when I read this uh, dilated figure or similar figure clockwise, and of course C prime, B prime, P prime, when I read it counterclockwise. So the orientation doesn't change. All right, special points on down here. Um, this is a lot, so I'll just read it to you so that you can just quickly jot it down. The center of dilation is located at the intersection of all lines connecting corresponding points on the image and pre-image or on the pre-image and image. Simply said or simply put, essentially where the points that connect your corresponding points, these points are corresponding because they end up in the same, they're in the same exact place in this triangle. And if we connect them, right, same thing here, if we connect the corresponding points, connect corresponding point C and C prime, this is where they will all converge. This is also known as the center of the dilation. All right, so that there, this point here, is the center of the dilation, the point where all of those lines that connect corresponding points meet. 
right? So a point located at the center of dilation does not move. So it is a fixed point. It's fixed. That's what fixed means in geometry. It's fixed, does not move, okay? And in this case, O or zero or O, it's really not zero, it's O, is the center of dilation because it is the intersection of P prime, PP prime, BB prime, and CC prime, okay? And that is the end of this video. Oh, actually there's more right here so my pages like this first page did not print i don't know why but um in any event you're going to staple that to the back of your packet tomorrow or at some point and there's this last page which focuses and this is actually in your packet it's actually the first very very first page of your packet it is part five sequence of transformations and you see these three uh images here this is the pre-image because it doesn't have any of those tick, um, excuse me, not prime, not tick marks. These are called prime, this is prime notation, okay? This has double prime notation, okay? So this is the pre-image. This is the image one, I'll call it, and this is image two, all right? So... Here you're being asked to describe a sequence of transformation that maps ABC to A prime, B prime, C prime. All right. You would definitely have to know what your points were. And it says here, I did, did this one for us as well. And really, I probably shouldn't have. I should have let you guys figure this out on your own. Um, but uh, I'm going to have you do part two uh, or the second part number two by yourself but of course here it says we dilated triangle abc with a scale factor as a scale factor of a half centered at the origin what i need for you to do is to show your work um, for how we know that it is a half and you need to do that right below question number two okay um, write an answer to question number two and then show the work for how we got a half right underneath question two Okay, that's what I'm going to be looking for tomorrow. Um, use the points to help you. So figure out what are the coordinates of A, what are the coordinates of B, what are the coordinates of C. And then, of course, you want the coordinates of A prime, B prime, and C prime. Alrighty, closing this video. Have a good day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.